so glad to be here this evening. And um, for those of you that, that uh, may not know who we are, I'd just like to take a moment to make a history. Make you a little more familiar. Um, I, I know some of you people, and you probably don't remember me. But I've been in this building more times than, than, uh, than just the last convention that we were here. I was here in the ages. Yes. Sat right on this platform over here. And, uh, I remember a lot of you. But uh, you probably say, who is this guy? But uh, I've changed a lot. Physically, I've I've gained a pound or two. And, uh, but anyway, just to give you a little history, um, the Lord uh, saved me in 1980 and uh, brought me to the church in Kingsport, Tennessee. And uh, Brother Doug Atkins here, he came to the church in Kingsport, Tennessee in 1976. And uh, Brother Carl Voorhees was our pastor. And uh, Brother Carl Voorhees' pastor was, uh, was James Souders. And... Uh, Brother Voorhees had churches in Moline, Rock Island, Gary, Indiana, before he came south into uh, uh, where we now call the Tri-Cities area. And, uh, and we've, we've been with the church in Kingsport has been there this year 50 years. 50 years. And it's been through quite a transition and a lot of changes. We've changed our name more than one time. And... Uh, that's not the only thing we changed, but but the Lord laid his hand on my life and on Brother Doug's life at a very young age. And I was uh, 19 years old when I was ordained as an elder and sat on the platform. Brother Doug was very young also. And we had a platform full of ministers like you have here now. And uh, we grew up, Brother Voorhees was our mentor. He, he mentored us in the ministry. And, and uh, we are what we are today because of him, as you are because of Brother Marlow. Yes. And uh, I've seen Brother Marlow many times, many times in different conventions and meetings. And I've never one time seen this man stand to his feet that the Lord didn't lay his hand upon him. <laughs> that the Lord didn't touch this man. Yes. And as he said here tonight that uh, Jesus was a little bit strange, and Brother Marlow said, I'm just a strange minister. Yes. Well, that's all right. Yes, sir. He's, a, he's in good company. Yes. Amen. Yes. But uh, we were, we've been in the church a long time, and uh, we've uh, been through the valleys, and we've been on the mountaintops. Yes, you have. And um, several years ago, we were ordained as pastors in the church because of a prophecy that was given in our assembly. And we have a young man that we really fully believe that he's a prophet, has the hand of God upon his life. I've seen things come to pass that would make you tremble when the words that he said would come to pass. But anyway, several years ago, Brother Doug and I were ordained as pastors in the church, as Brother Marlon said. Brother Landa Ray is our senior pastor. He came down to Kingsport in 1995 when our uh, former pastor passed away, Brother Voorhees, and he wanted. Brother may have already come to Kingsport. That was his desire. But a few years ago, the Lord began to shake things up again in our assembly and began to move the furniture around. You know, he has that right to move the furniture around whenever he wants to. And, and so uh, I was ordained as pastor. Brother Doug was ordained as a pastor. And we had Brother Miranda Ray, which is a, was a pastor. And you might think that a little bit strange because a lot of people did. A lot of people said, well, how can you have three pastors? How can this thing work? But we just we just let God work it all out. And over the last few several years now, the Lord has worked it all out. And I am pastor of the church in Kingsport, Tennessee, locally. That's my position. I pastor the church locally. I'm the minister on Sunday morning and whenever. But Brother Doug Atkins is, our, is a pastor. And he has a ministry, we have a small groups uh, ministry in our church, and he pastors these small groups as well as our outreach uh, ministry. He travels all over the country, all over the world, 
Brother Doug Atkins got back Wednesday from Africa, being there three weeks, and we left Friday morning to come down here. This man's got a lot of miles under his belt. And, uh, it was three weeks in Africa. He just returned home, but but our brother Ray, we have Ray, our senior pastor. He's he 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 he's getting into the place where God wants him to be at this present time. Has it been easy? No. Has the transition been so smooth? No. But but God has worked it all out, and we're you know, where we are by the grace of God. And uh, our assembly is uh, better because of it, because of the ministry that we now have. And uh, I said all that because God God knows exactly what He's doing, and and God knows God knows far more than we ever give Him credit for most of the time. And and a lot of times we you know. I've, I've been so excited so many times to learn something about God, but Job said it best. He said, Lo, these are but parts of his ways. For the thunder of his power, who can know it? Who really knows how great God really is? And we see a little portion of him, you know, and we get so excited. It thrills us, you know. But, you know, I, I've learned one thing. I enjoy serving God. I mean, I enjoy serving God. Some, some people endure. Some people just endure serving God. But I've learned to enjoy serving God. Yes. Whatever God brings my way, I've learned to enjoy what God Amen. puts before me and be a partaker of it. Be glad Amen. that this is the day that the Lord made. And I choose to be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. Amen. So we're so thankful to be here tonight in, in, in Brayton, Florida. Uh, this, this dear man of God is, is in our hearts. And he's, he's a friend. He's a friend of ours, and uh, he, 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 he's welcome in our assembly any time, and uh, he was there with us and ministered, and I'm just amazed that Brother Marlowe doesn't age. He told us in Kingsport he's never had a tooth pulled. I said, he's got one up on me, you know, and this man's amazing how the Lord has, has, has kept him alive and kept his hand on his life, because you really... You, you really as an assembly, you see, I sit alone sometimes and and remember the day when, when, when men that mentored my life, they're not there anymore. And you wish you could just sit down with them one more time. It's all true. You really do. Amen, brother. I mean, I mean, no matter how great you get, no matter how much God uses you, you wish that sometimes they were there. And you're so blessed to have this man here, right now. Amen. 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 Yes. You should, you should rejoice Amen. every time you see this man walk in this assembly. When he, when he gets sick, you should pray that God keep him alive. This man, this man has got a wealth of what God can do for your life. You can drink from this fountain that God's put in your midst. So wonderful, so powerful. When he stands to his feet, ah, brother, brother Marlowe, I didn't feel like you took too much time. Amen. I could sit all night long and listen to you. Thank you, my brother. Amen. I could sit all night long. Yes. You're a patriarch. You are. You, the, the, really, I'm telling you, saints of God, you know, we take things for granted. Right. We live life so fast. Life so fast. And then it's, it's just a vapor. It's here and it's gone. And we look back and say, where did it go? And, and this man that's here right now, not, not to give him more glory than Christ, I'm not doing that. But honor to whom honor? <coughs> Double honor to those that labor in the word of God. Amen. And, and when I look at men of God, like Brother Marlowe, it does my heart good to be, to be a young minister and to sit and listen to them. And to watch how God's touched their lives. I, I'm not so concerned about them being so profound. I've seen profound men. I've heard profound messages out of the Word of God. I've heard doctrine from, from one end of the spectrum to the other. I've had my head feel until it's, you know, grew and grew. But someone, like Brother Marlowe said, a man with an experience, yeah. Never at the mercy of a man with an argument. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I would, I would, I would. I told the saints of God years ago. I said yeah. I would trade all that I know to have an experience with God. Yeah. That's it. I would trade it. 
Amen. What, what good is knowledge without an experience? What good is an understanding of God's Word without an experience? I mean, I mean, when you come into the church and you think, what are we going to receive? Did you know that you could have an experience in this place over this weekend? It would be greater than anything that I could say or anyone Amen. else could say. Amen. Amen. He can do more for you in a moment Amen, brother. than we could do all of our lifetimes. Yes. Yes. You have the greatest opportunity in the world yes. to draw close to Him. Yes. You know, I told our church here the other weekend, I said, you know, we, we all want our churches to be full. Yeah. And we've, we've, we've planned and schemed and thought and we, if we do this, maybe they'll come. And one or two come and two or three leave. And if we do this, maybe. Maybe if we change this, maybe they'll come. What's the secret? Where do we go? What do we do? And we've made a lot of changes. And we're by no means leaders of anyone. I'm a follower of Christ. I'm not a leader. I'm a follower. And, you, and we, we've done a lot of things. We've made a lot of changes. We've been on a lot of people's radar. They've heard about us. It's a good thing when people talk about you. Amen. It's a good thing. Amen. If, if this city is not talking about this church, Amen. why not? It, why not? There yeah. ought to be something going on All right. that people Amen. say, did you hear? That was so strange. Well, let it be strange. But I don't talk about you. Let the word go out. Because somebody will come and see. Come on. Yeah. Somebody will come and see. Come on. You know, you know, this woman, when she sat on the well, yeah. and, she, and Jesus said, give me drink. She said, how is it you being a Jew? Ask me. Yeah. A woman of Samaria to give you a drink. Jesus said, if you knew who it was that asked you, you would have asked of him. Yes. And he would have given you living water. Praise God. She ran into the city. Oh, yes. And she said, come see a man. Come see yes. him. Told me all things. Yes. That's not good for Christ. Yes. I mean, it stirred that city up. Just yes. that little experience that you had. Yes. So it's not a bad thing when people start talking about you. No. When they get their mouths open and start saying, did you hear what I heard over there? Well, we made a lot of changes. And we've done a lot of things. But the one thing that will fill this church up from the front to the back. Come on. Jesus said, if I be lifted up. If I be lifted up. Praise God. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. Amen. I'll draw all men unto me. It's not the way you look. It's not the songs that you sing. It's not the way you sing them. He said, if I be lifted up. If it gives him glory, let's do it. Yes. If it gives him glory, yes. that's what we want. Yes. If it's in a testimony, you say, well, I can't preach like you can. You're not called to. Yes. Did you know that every child of God is unique in their calling? Yes. They're so unique. God is such a God of diversity. Aren't you glad he is? Aren't you glad that there's not just one species of animals on the face of the earth? I mean, aren't you glad that that the trees don't all look the same? Yes. Aren't you glad the climates are different? Yes. But guess what? So are God's people. Yes. They're so different. Yes. I mean, they're so different. They are. They don't look alike. They don't act alike. They are. I mean, I mean, we can try to make them look alike and toe the line and, and act just alike. But the truth of the matter is, God put the members in the body. Every one of them is it pleased Him. Yes. And if it pleased Him, yes. then it makes me happy. Yes. If it pleased Him, yes. it makes me happy. Yes. I should rejoice. Yes. Does it matter? We, we cross, we're across cultural barriers. We do. We cross all kinds of barriers. Because when it's all said and done, in the book of Revelation, every, every kindred, every tongue, every people, Every nation is going to be represented in the kingdom of God. Out of every tongue, every people, every nation, someone is going to be there that the gospel reached out and touched. And, it, and it, I understand it won't be me and mine that touches everyone in this world. Somebody somewhere tonight is preaching in Russia. Amen. There's a church there that's lifting up the name of Jesus. It has to be the word of God can't lie. Hallelujah. And whatever God said about us 
must come to pass. So it's not 